these kids can come up with their own ideas. They can build on ideas to develop their own theories and strategies in math. And once we started seeing that happening, I think that's when the momentum really began. Hmm. Wait, would you be able to do that backwards? Hmm. No, you probably couldn't do that. I'm just going to try it the other way. I realized that I was a thinker. So when I realized that strength in myself as a learner and a student, um, I started to wonder how I could, um, I, how could I start to make that happen in my classroom? So understanding my own self as a learner, understanding my own need to think, the joy that I find from thinking, um, it, it made me wonder how can I bring that joy to the students? So as I, as I continued down my journey as a teacher, um, I really started to um, collaborate with more educators. I spent a lot of time reading and spending time um, learning with other professionals and thinking about what that looks like. What does a thinking classroom look like? Two times ten. I'm pretty sure. What we're hoping for our learners, I think the beginning is that they all feel safe, comfortable and welcome in our learning environments. Uh, we intentionally create many opportunities for them to build relationships with one another and to get to know each other as individuals and as learners. We believe every child is capable of mathematical thinking. And so we intentionally create those moments for them to think curiously and creatively in math. We knew we wanted kids thinking in math. We, we knew they weren't thinking enough and it really took a hard look in the mirror for us to see what we were doing that was stopping them from doing that. And I think it was in the answering the questions and the feeding them the information. And so that belief that kids are capable had to get stronger. And Aiden saw like all kites are rented for eight hours. And then where we went wrong was right here. Four times 14 times eight. Try to create the norms around those beliefs that depth is more important than speed, that math is visual, math is creative, uh, feedback feeds our learning forward, and experimentation is vital in the numeracy classroom. My partnership with Jen has been so special because we're very different. So we are very interested in learning and growing, but we both bring different strengths to our collaborative team. So I think when I recognize those differences as strengths, I feel like our relationship was growing and growing. So the practices that we're using uh, specifically in numeracy are based on our love of inquiry. Uh, we have spent years of research, practice and collaboration to build a culture of inquiry and we know that does take time. Um, and we see the numeracy classroom as a place where it's so rich an opportunity for creativity and for collaboration and for curiosity and for inquiry. So um, I think we, we were seeing our whole day in inquiry but every, sometimes when we hit numeracy we forget that, that that can live there. Um, so a lot of our learning has been around allowing that inquiry to flow through numeracy. I have been looking for ways to develop a thinking classroom and one of the places I did look was um, the OECD Principles of Learning and um, I realized that it was just one piece. And I also started to realize that another piece was the first people's principles of learning. So as I see them together, I know I notice how my understanding is deepening, um, and I can see how these two these two worlds um, come together in my elementary school classroom. I can show my thinking and learn from others, and I can hear their um, thoughts about what I was doing and how they were thinking in their own way and how different our thinking is from others. Put a lot of work into getting to know our students as individual learners and we try to select tasks to reflect that and we adjust 
to put each student at the centre of their learning and so that they may all feel success. Um, we use open-ended rich tasks um, that will promote curiosity and creative thinking for our learners. Uh, we often will activate their thinking. Uh, this helps us to build up that curiosity to uncover any misconceptions that may exist and to find any prior knowledge that the kids do have. Uh, sometimes we use three-act math tasks, we might uh, go on an intentional nature hike, we'll read a story or play a game, and um, we'll often come together in circle to share what we notice, think or wonder about what it is we're talking about. Uh, we then move into some collaborative problem solving based on the tasks that we have selected. Uh, we believe it's really important that students share their thinking and build their own ideas and strategies around numbers. We encourage them to be creative so that they are showing their thinking using numbers and symbols and pictures and words on chart paper and often at a vertical workspace. Um, we believe this time is really important for them uh, and they love to bounce ideas off one another uh, and to build that, uh, again, that curiosity. Um, in order to really create that thinking classroom, and this is something that really stood out for me from Peter Liliadal was that to stop answering the stop thinking questions. Uh, we pay attention to our students and when they're ready we move into feedback cycles uh, where we put them with other peers and they have an opportunity to justify and share their thinking with another group. Um, the kids, this has taken some time, uh, but they do seem to really enjoy it now and uh, we give them time to reflect on that feedback and we co-created criteria together around that feedback as well. Um, and then they have time to apply the feedback to their thinking before moving into math council. Maya, um, did you guys both agree on the strategies or did you guys want to do different ones? So the end of our inquiry cycle is a math council where the students have an opportunity to come together to share and justify their thinking to the whole class and to ask each other questions to clarify strategies or understanding um, to propel all of our learning forward. Uh, throughout this time we as teachers are observing and documenting and noticing and wondering alongside our students. We might be pulling small groups aside in order to further hear those strategies and have their thinking visible. Um, and then we are also helping them to gather evidence of their growth and learning and they use learning maps to do that as well. It's a lot of fun. It helps kids learning like at the start of the year. Most people were just like this, waiting for it to be over, but now everyone's got their hand up asking the people who are sharing questions. It is a really good way to open up to other people too and kind of just try new ways of doing things. When they share they get more confidence and when people ask them questions they get excited and happy. In terms of goals for where we want to go next I think we just always want to go deeper into the idea of inquiry and building that culture of inquiry into our students. Um, just living in the questions. The more that I learn, the more that I see themselves as learners. I have patience for my learners and I have patience for myself. I'm like excited. I feel like shouting, yeah, I got it. <laughs>